Okay, this video is going to be a review of calculating um, conditional probability and determining independence using two-way tables. It would be best if you were to pause the video at each page and then work on them and unpause the video and check your work as I go um, using my explanation as needed. You can always fast forward and rewind the video to check your work again as you go. So let's start on page 34. Again, you should be pausing the video to try the problems. So we already have the 1000 here um, and we wanna know uh, all these different probabilities. Let's get the table filled in first. And first we need to know, let's see, we've got students who like pizza. So that's gonna be 354 and ninth graders is gonna be five. 66 and 10th graders who like pizza so we got to be careful here because i'm looking at this 10th graders who like pizza hmm that means of all the 10th graders the probability of liking pizza is this because otherwise I'm not going to add up to a thousand. So let's let's see what we can get here. And let's use a little powers of subtraction. Let me grab my calculator. And the first thing I'm going to do is 1000 minus, and I find that I have 646 French fry eaters and I have 434. 10th graders. Now the proportion of 10th graders who like pizza. So that means if I multiply the probability of 10th graders liking pizza, because that's what this value is, times 434, I'm going to get 0.7, or sorry, times 0.764, I will get the number of 10th grade pizza eaters. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and multiply this times the number of 10th graders. And I have rounded to the nearest whole person. And that means so now this tells me that the ninth graders who like pizza, if I just subtract that, I'm gonna get 23 and subtract 23 from 566. And I've got 543. And a little more subtraction gives me 103 10th grade French fry eaters. And so now I'm ready to start completing the table. So the first few are gonna go pretty easily. Um, the probability of not liking pizza, in other words, the probability of liking French fries is just gonna be 64.6%. because I'm just simply dividing this number here by a thousand. And same thing for the probability of not being a ninth grader, in other words, being a 10th grader is simply going to be 43.4%. So now I'm gonna get into some slightly trickier probabilities. And I'm gonna to have to do a little erasing, so you're gonna to have to stick with me. The probability of liking pizza, given that you are a ninth grader, I'm only looking at this ninth grade column. And I'm going to take the total number of ninth graders, and I'm going to divide them by the 23 pizza eaters, to get 23 out of 566. And I will divide out these if I need to, to determine independence, but honestly, I'm good right there. All right, so now, if I'm looking for the probability of being a ninth grader, given that you are a pizza eater, so now I'm only looking at my pizza eating people. So out of the 354 pizza eaters, only 23 of them are in the ninth grade. So I'm going to have 23 out of 354. Now, going back to my ninth graders, what what's the probability if I know you are a ninth grader, all right? If I know you're a ninth grader, what's the probability that you are not a pizza eater? In other words, you're a French fry eater, is gonna be 543 out of 566. 
I'm going to stop circling. Um, I'll like kind of over it, hover over. I don't know, the pen's very small. So now the probability of not P given not G, not G is ninth graders. My total number of ninth graders, or sorry, of 10th graders is 434. Of my 434, 100, this is very small, 103 of them prefer not pizza, in other words, prefer French fries. P of not G given P. So the P row I'm going to look at, my total amount is going to be my 354 pizza eaters. And of those pizza eaters, how many of them are not in the ninth grade? Would be the 331 10th graders. And finally, probability of not G, in other words, the probability of 10th grade given not P, so not pizza is French fries. I have how many French fry eaters? I have 646 French fry eaters. And of those 646 French fry eaters, I think I said three, sorry, 103 of them are 10th graders. All right. So the bottom says, are the events preferred food? So in other words, event P and grade event G independent. So from yesterday's lesson, we know the best way to show independence is find the probability of the first event and then the probability of the first event given that the second event has occurred. So let's go back and look at our list here. P of P, oh, we actually don't have that, but that's not hard to get because you know it's out of a thousand. So we have 35.4%. So now P given G, oh, we have, oh, we do have that one. 23 out of 566, let's break that down. 23 out of 566. I'm pretty sure that is not 35%, but just for fun, divided by 566. Sure enough, that is 4%. We can conclusively say that because P of P does not equal P of P given G, preferred food, and make sure you state what your two events are, grade are not independent. Remember, we're not saying they're dependent. We are saying they are not independent. We have not proven that they are dependent on each other. We have just shown that they are not independent of one another. So again, today is a review day. So the best way to handle this is to pause the video and work on a few problems. And then after that, come back, turn the video back on, check your work, um, fast forward, rewind as necessary. So if you've already started the problems, here we go. So we are asked to write out the sample space. We have a four space spinner. So again, we've got, a, it's a fair spinner. One, two, three, four. And we have a fair coin, which is heads and tails. So four choices on the spinner and heads or tails gives me eight possible outcomes. I could do one heads, I could do one tails. I could do two head. I always like saying two heads. I think that's funny, two heads. Or I could do two tails, three heads are better than two heads, three tails, four headed monster. Okay, so these are the eight items in my sample space. And now I'm going to look at the three events listed in B and see what the probability of each is. So flipping heads and landing on a four, well, that's pretty obvious. There's only one way to get heads and four, which is going to be one out of eight. Because I'm not comparing these, it is perfectly acceptable to leave them as fractions. As a habit, we should reduce our fractions if they reduce. So flipping tails and the spinner landing on an even number. So we could do two tails, we could do four tails. So that's gonna be two out of eight or one fourth. I should not have to tell you on a fraction like two out of eight 
to reduce it to one fourth. The ones in the warm up are different. Those numbers are ridiculous, but two eighths reduces to one fourth. Please make it so. Flipping heads and rolling a number greater than two. So that would be heads three, heads four. And again, we have two eighths, which is one fourth. Now, letter C says, based on the definition of independence, explain why the probabilities of the events flipping tails and spinning a one are independent, well, unless the word are, are independent or not independent. So let's be clear, the probability of flipping tails, now you can just say this is 50%. We know it's a coin 50-50. If we are using the sample space, four out of the eight are tails, and then that is the same thing as 50%. Okay, so to do see like four tails now either way you're just going to go with 50 percent, and then you have to say that the probability of tails given that you have spun a one so if i look at the ones only the ones like right here how many of them are tails one so one out of two is also 50 percent and we can say that because P of T equals P of T given one, the events, this pen does not pick up my handwriting super great. Sorry about that. The events flipping tails And spinning a one are independent. Knowing that you have spun a one does not change the probability of flipping tails. So based on the definition of independence, um, flipping heads and spinning an odd number, are they independent or not independent? So the probability of heads is 50%. Again, you're flipping a coin or it's four out of four out of 10. Four out of eight, I don't know why I said four out of 10. And then we've got the probability of spinning an odd number. So heads given odd. So let's just go up to the top here. Let's we'll switch to a highlighter. Um, odd number odd number right so there are four odd numbers that i've circled here in green and two of them have heads so heads given odd is going to be two out of four which is the same thing again as 50 percent let me see if i can yes oh that's much nicer and we can say because p of H equals P of H given odd the events flipping heads and spinning an odd number are independent, please make sure you state the two events in your final conclusion. Again, you should be pausing the video and not just copying down my work. That's how we make sure we're ready. So on page 37, you've got um, a situation here where we've surveyed freshmen and sophomore and we've got their drink preferences. So let's take a look at what we've got. The first thing we're looking for is the probability that a student chosen at random prefers Gatorade. Now this is lovely because it's out of 100 and I'm super excited about this. So we've got just 35 out of 100 is 35%. The probability that selected at random is, there's my verb, a freshman who prefers soda. There are 35, six freshmen who prefer soda. So 36 out of 100 is 36%. Right. 
Uh, this is going to be tricky because I got to see the table. There we go. All right. The probability that a student selected at random is sophomore. Now we got to be careful. Is sophomore who prefers Gatorade? Now, hmm, is this conditional? So let's take a look at C and B because some people are going to be like, yeah, it's the same. Let's read them carefully. Probability that a student selected at random is sophomore who prefers Gatorade versus who is sophomore prefers Gatorade. One of them is conditional. They can't be exactly the same. So the question is, which one is the conditional statement? If you said D is conditional, you are correct. C is the probability of, I'm just going to use the initials. Like, oh, no, I'm going to call this F, not F, soda, not soda. Okay, so if I'm looking for sophomore, who prefers Gatorade? I'm looking for sophomore and Gatorade. Sophomore and Gatorade are going to be these 13 peoples out of 100. So that's going to just be 13%. But if I'm looking for who is a sophomore, right, I know they are a sophomore, prefers Gatorade. See how where the who makes a difference. Who is sophomore? A student selected at random, who is sophomore, prefers Gatorade. So now I'm going to have, okay, I'm going to look at the Gatorade drinkers. Or sorry, first I'm going to look at the sophomore. So here's my sophomore row. And 13 of those 42. And if I need to, I'll divide it out. And it doesn't reduce, so it's good there. So now, oh, look, they use the same letters I did. So now we're going to see, are these events independent? So again, we want to use the defini definition of independence. I'm going to take my first event, probability of freshmen. The probability of freshmen, how many freshmen are there? Are 58 freshmen. Probability of freshmen is 58%. And then I'm going to go, the probability of the first event, if I know the second event has occurred. So the probability of freshmen given soda, remember S is soda. If I know I'm only looking at the soda drinkers, I'm gonna to switch to orange. I'm only looking at these soda drinkers. So I have 65 soda drinkers. Of those 65 soda drinkers, 36 are freshmen. So I'm gonna say 36 out of, or you forgot how many are there, 65. I'm going to grab a calculator. When I divide that out, I get 55%. And so because P of F is not equal to P of F given S, now what are my events? The events, student is a freshman. and student prefer soda are not independent. Okay, we have another situation here. We have freshmen and Gatorade. So we can recycle our answer from P of F. We know that the probability of freshmen is 58. We just need the probability of freshmen given Gatorade. Oh, they switched up the letters on us. Ha, ah, they thought they were being tricky. So let's look at the Gatorade column. So here's my Gatorade column, I'm circling it in green. My 35 Gatorade drinkers of those 35, 22 are freshmen. I'm going to grab my handy dandy calculator and it's close. Oh, I forgot the percentage. It's closer, but no cigar. 63%. So we can say because P of F, you must put this statement in your write up, is not equal to the probability of F given Gatorade. The, uh, I need to switch that typing. It just looks like trash.
the event student is a freshman and student prefers Gatorade are not dependent. Cool. Let's see. We got one more um, we need to check on. Let's take a look at our next two, final two events. Sophomore and Gatorade. So again, we're just going to go the probability of being a sophomore. Let me look at my table. There are 42 sophomores out of 100. So the probability of being a sophomore is 42%. The probability of being a sophomore, if I know you like Gatorade. So let me go back. Let me go look where I circled in green because that was the Gatorade color. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I've got 20. No, I've only got 13 out of, I wait, I think I wrote something wrong. Yes, I did. No, no, I didn't. I'm good. Am I good? Nope. Yeah, I got the 22. For some reason, I thought I wrote 13. So I've got 13 sophomores out in the Gatorade column. So again, I'm looking only at what I circled in green, only at the Gatorade column. I see out of my 35, there are 13. So let's go back here and type that in. 13 out of 35. And when I grab my calculator and I divide that, I get percent. So once again, because P of S does not equal P of S given G, the events. If you don't practice writing now, you're going to screw it up on the quiz. So practice the writing now. The events, what are the events? Student is a sophomore. Please make sure you plagiarize um, with your spelling. If you misspell sophomore and it's on the paper, it's sad. So at this point, we are at the end of the classwork, I believe. Let me check. Yup, and now we are on to homework, and I'm going to leave you to do that on your own. The answers are posted. Here are classwork answers. They will also be posted. Um, and your homework tonight is to complete page 38.